precious one, welcome to Time with Archbishop Charles. This is my 40 years in full-time pastoral ministry and also in a miracle ministry. And like I've said in earlier episodes, it's an opportunity to fellowship with people I've known in these 40 years, seasoned people, different kinds of people, and the different parts they've played for me to get here. And today, I'm talking to one of my dear friends, Eliva brother, Minyanko Brebo, who we've gone over the years. I've stayed in his house severally. Um, he stayed in my house in the north. Uh, we go a long way back. Bishop Matthew Adamensa, welcome to Time with Archbishop Charles. Thank you, Archbishop. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Um, for a viewer who doesn't know Bishop Matthew Adamensa, yeah. can you tell us who Bishop Matthew Adamensa is? Oh, um, Bishop Adamensa is um, someone who comes from a place called Chufuhemai. I grew up there, and uh, um, I was born in a strange circumstance. My mom uh, was in a hospital dying, and then I, uh, the doctor said uh, he would not make it. At that time, he was pregnant with, with me, and he was asked to go home. So my grandma go home and die. And die. So my grandma picked my mom, brought, you know, the hospital was at uh, Asim Fosu, you know, Catholic hospital. So brought my mom to our home in uh, Chufohimai. And my grandmother, people persuaded her, why don't you go and see this powerful fetish priest? He's called Okonfo Asante. So my grandma went there with my mom. As soon as the fetish priest saw my mom, he said, no, 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 no. I, the woman is already dead. I don't want a dead body in my shrine right. here. So my mom uh, was brought back cool. to the house. And uh, family member there went gathered around waiting. And then there was a woman called Mami Joanna, Abawa Joanna. It was a uh, a Pentecostal woman born in the spirit and was also an itinerary evangelist from Elemina. Then according to her, God spoke to her that go to Chifuhimai. There is a house they sell a petition. My grandma mm -hmm. used to sell a petition. A local gin. Yeah, local gin. Then you find a, a woman there dying. Go and pray for her. So the woman just with a bell, grind, 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 came there, prayed instantly. My mom was okay. healed. And then he prophesied to my mom that you are pregnant with a son, and that son uh, shall be used by God. I mean, uh, he is going to be a man of God. So growing up in the home, we, we had a Catholic background. So it was known that I'm going to become a Catholic priest. So along at the age of eight, I started serving. And then, uh, so when I was writing for Common Entrance, I wrote uh, the seminary entrance, that is uh, St. Teresa's. And I wrote also, I picked uh, um, Augustine's, Cape Coast. And I passed both, but I had to go to the discipline. Well, we were there three months, and then um, we were asked, we were about um, eight boys, we were asked to uh, come back. You know, that means we, we cannot mm. continue. Okay. And, and that was a, a big blow, because in my mind, I think I was going to become Can Father you Mighty. Wow. <laughs> and then uh, such a thing happened. So basically, but I went to a secular school and gradually, uh, by God's grace. Then when I was in School of Mines, you know, I was doing mechanical engineering. And that was the second year. But when I went to school, I, I decided not to have anything with God. Okay. Because the Catholics, they told me that God, to me, I interpreted it to mean God does not need me. Okay. So I became a boxer. 
uh, learn to become a boxer, and I wanted to become a professional boxer. Oh, and I now, also, I now see how you box in the spirit. <laughs> how you box in the spirit like that. And then also, I became a musician. Uh, they used to call me um, so Yao your Jimmy Cliff. Was a, your father was a My musician. My father was a musician. Mm -hmm. So the music actually was there. And um, I remember this um, uh, Aboso Glass Factory. They used to have a, a band called Air Dorados. You know, they wanted to poach me. They, they want my signature for contract because uh, Aboso and Takwa, he came to school, spoke to me several times. And then I came home. It was vacation. Then I met some of my, uh, let me say, seminary guys that were rejected. Now they have found Christ. One of them approached me and said, no, you need to give your life to Jesus. I said, what? Me, do you know whom I am? And you are not telling me that. So why the conversation, I got angry. And normally, when you've trained to be a boxer, the least opportunity, you just want to uh, show your, Prowess. <laughs> your powers. And so basically, the whole thing turned nasty. I walked home. And then 2 a.m., I looked at the wall. And it, it came to a giant screen. At that time, we didn't have a giant yeah, screen. Giant screen. So it was something. Strange. Then I saw Jesus walking in. You know, I was sharing the bed with my younger brother. And I had a friend um, also. He was on the floor. He walked in and looked at me. And he mentioned my name. And when he started talking, it was like fire. In my body, it's like electricity running through me. And I started pleading, please, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then he said so many things. At that time, he said, I'm giving you the sign of the age. This was 13th October 1976. He said, I'm giving you the sign of the age. Communism will fail. East and West Germany will become one. And then the West would turn their back on my father and the law. This is how he put it. You know, they would call what is abomination as truth. He started saying all these things. But at that time, well, I, I, I didn't have much knowledge about all these things. And then he said, go to Church of Pentecost. They will teach you the will of salvation. And after, I will appear to you and tell you what you should do. So basically that is how, I mean, uh, it took me almost, when he said that, in fact, I made an attempt about four times. Because uh, to me in that time, you know, the Pentecostals, we have some mentality, and they clap their hands, abon them, and we have all kinds of funny, funny um, things about them, the way they worship, you know. But finally, I went, received Christ, and I remember one Edda Debra, E.G. Debra, the late Edda E.G. Debra, he led me to Christ. And he looked at my face and said, this boy is going to become another Paul, the apostle, I remember. Amen. So that is how I became <laughs> born again. We thank God. Yeah. We thank God. Not only have you been born again, but you are a minister of the gospel. That is and, that's true. Uh, I met you in 19... 86. Yes. When I came to Nigeria. Nigeria. To no, 85. No, 86. 86. Okay. Yes, when I came to Idahosa. Yeah. And. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. We met, and I think when we met, I think the uh, Reverend Apo had yep. spoken about yes. me. Yes. And yes. then he had spoken about you. Yes. And then we met, and you, you said. Uh, you were inviting me to come to your church. You were pastoring in Nigeria then. Yes, okay. I, I, I was. You know, I was first pastoring in Benin City. Okay. But something happened. One day I was there. I, my senior pastor was Reverend Napoleon Imari Agbe. So one day I was there. Uh, he came to me that Papa wanted to see me. And that was uh, Papa Ida Hosa. So 
I went there, and then I met another pastor there. And then he said, um, might you, uh, you are doing some great stuff. I think that time, somebody died in that place. Okay. You know, I, they call it Aduawa Cortez. And uh, I prayed for the person, and he came back to life. I think that was the second time I was raising, uh, I mean, people from the dead. I had that experience. And so Papa said, uh, you've been transferred with immediate effect. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't know why he said, Orenigbe. He said, you need to go. Uh, by tomorrow, um, go and tell your wife, you've been transferred, you have to go. And you know, at that time, uh, we as ministers, very obedient. And you have to be. And I want young men and women in ministry to know that. You see, your leader can call you, you know, and, and send you to a place, maybe to you, it may not be, because there was no light when you came. There was no light, there was no running water in Orenigbe. He said, will you go? I said, yes, Papa, I'll go. And he said, Nida, let me pray for you. I thought Papa was going to open some drawer and put some... Uh, Don't know some money for you. <laughs> yes. But he prayed for me. But uh, he, I remember he said, anything you need has been paid for. <laughs> and so... so you I, thought there was a businessman there. Oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> <was> paid for. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Everything <laughs> yeah. is paid for. So when I went to Oreni Bay, you know, uh, the pastor there had an encounter. A demon-like ape came from nowhere. Assaulted the pastor. Uh, basically, I, I'm not looking down. So he was, he was carried out of the place, the dying. Place, he was dying at the hospital. We even passed there. He even told my wife, we shouldn't go there. And he loved the first son. It was, a high, you know, the place you came there is, uh, I mean, a place or a nigga. It is the second important uh, town after Benin City. That's where the Obar of Benin, the gods, that's Olokun God, the headquarters is at Oreni Bay. You know, and they have all kinds of stars there that if you joke, because when I went, I was the 14th pastor, but the story wasn't good. Most of the pastors, either you, one is dead, paralyzed, got involved with some shameful things, and it was all over the place. And so we went there. And I remember when we went, um, the mission house was an ancient building. The bed was made of clay, you know, so we spent three days there. And I remember Papa said, anything you need has been paid for. So I got up, I told my wife, I'm coming. Went through the city, find a very nice house. You know, you came to that place. It was as far as that place was concerned, you know, furnished. You know, had the glass windows and everything. So I sneaked through. An old lady came and he said, what are you looking for? I said, who is the owner of this house? He said, my son. He's in the city. I said, tell your son that the person we need to live in this house has come. <laughs> so the man came. He said, oh, I've heard that uh, Idahosa sent you. Uh, you want to rent a place. Do you have money? I said, no, I'm not here to rent. I'm here to live in your house. He said, oh, no, but you can't have such a thing here. This is Nigeria, everything in money. So I picked my Bible, started reading Luke chapter. As you go, if you enter the house and the man is <laughs> ready, he said, sit down, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> sit down. So uh, <laughs> he said, how long? I said, as long as I live in this place. You know, and then, but when we went to the place, we saw the challenge highly demonic um, challenge area. You have all kinds of things going on. And the church, we had a few people there. And I, I also came to know that um, people used to die in a place. They have a festival called Ikaba. Now the time I invited you, Ikaba festival, and people start dying anyhow. And not only that, um, in Orenic Bay, everything is possible there, you know. So the church, I think you came to see the church. We were just 
a few church, and I started gradually. Then I decided, no, something needs to change. I needed some help, and I invited you. I invited Bishop James Sarr, and you came there. So we have to uh, do fasting and prayer, and you know, to, to stand against the demonic powers. You know, so when you are sent to a place, and the place um, is under the influence of the devil, that's why we are called, you know. And through the power of the gospel, preaching the gospel, you know, and uh, you know that place, God did so many things. God did so many things. Okay, so know? when we met, no. you invited me there. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, that was how... Yes. We met. Yeah. And uh, I, I stayed with you for about a week. A week. You spent a week with us. It was a very powerful time. We had a powerful time. The influence was so felt all over the place, you know, because it was a Kaba. And the amazing thing, one of the testimony that year, people said, ah, Ikaba, people know Dayo. Ah, mm. this one is different, you know, because you were there and the way the prayer meetings went and there were healings, there were deliverance, and so many things really happened, you know. And, and I was very grateful that you came. And not only that you came, but I mean, you also ate Jackie meat. <laughs> that, <laughs> just camel meat. <laughs> camel meat. <laughs> that, that's what we had yeah. there, you know. And so, but uh, uh, let me say, any other pastor wouldn't come to Orenigbe. You know, but at that time, one thing I found very strange about you, it's like you wanted adventure of faith. And so any demonic challenge area, you are ready to go. And once it is about the gospel, and once it is about people getting saved, you were, re I mean, I didn't give you any offering. It wasn't just, I mean, it wasn't anything, because we even didn't have the offering. <laughs> <laughs> but you came, but you were so excited just to, I mean, and... and, and in our days, um, the fulfillment was in getting souls saved, the sick healed, and the demonized set free, even when you didn't get any financial reward. Yeah. Um, we, we saw it as that what, that's what God wanted us to do, and we were called to do it, so we did it, you know. Uh, fast forward... Um, I came to Ghana, yeah. we went to Tamale, yeah. and then you also came from Nigeria. Nigeria. And uh, in Tamale, um, you were one of the people who came to visit us. Yeah. Um, and then also I was privileged to speak in your church, Gospel Light yes. at Orion, yes. several. Yes. Mama, now the dance here me. Obey to me, I can't. I know now can't crack around my camera of me. Eh, and your mama was seen nineteen ninety two. Uh huh. Then you see, me are in nineteen ninety two. I was sick. With the thirty seven hospital. I I was admitted at the thirty seven hospital. Doctor, they say me my new ovarian tumor. The doctors said I had ovarian tumor. So one year test. One year test. Okay, they did test, scan, scan and everything, and so I had ovarian tumor. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to the theater. I'm going to send back. So they take me to the theater and bring me back. Four times. Four, four times they didn't do the surgery. The sister be all damaged. There was a sister by my side in the hospital. Oh, see, ah, we are really in gym, they say. A natural. She said, your sickness, I don't think, is a natural one. They are having a miracle service at Gospel Light. Go to the place. So I asked that I be discharged. So they made me sign that I'm discharging myself. And uh, the next day, you know, call Gospel Light. So the next day, I came to Gospel Light. Now me see the fifth floor, but me man, who usher man, who be I didn't talk to anybody 
Nobody knew my problem. I was sitting on the fifth row. That time, not, I didn't even call someone. Bishop said, we be yari, ni yefu, or free hospice, eh, or yari ni yefu. So you give a word of knowledge. There's somebody with a stomach problem, and you are just coming from the hospital. And you said God is healing the person. And you showed where the person was sitting. That you are on the fifth row. At one point he said, me. But you didn't say you didn't say it's me. But when you said it, I knew I was the one. I started rolling from there to the front. Started vomiting. Then I started throwing up. When I came back to myself, I see the thing in my stomach, grown in my stomach. When I started touching it, I couldn't find anything. So I came up stage and testified that I've been healed. So I went back to 37 to show myself to the doctor. They did fresh scans and there was no trace of the tumor. And then Mama now can say, nah, yeah, boils. She was telling me she, she had multiple boils. And she had been operated how many times? Eight times. Eight times. But the since last one in the Ridge Hospital. In the Paris. last one in the Ridge Hospital. But after the administration, that's it. Me Never. Da also for five months now. Doctor no umbe ye away conference say my sex can see Jimmy Fee. I stayed so much in the hospital they said they will not even charge me. God is a good team God. Doctor Balu and the team. Okay, so Doctor Balu and the team. I want to thank God. If God did it for me, God will do it for you. God bless you, Mama Yedenyamnyasi. Amen. Can you say a few things about those days? Yeah. Um. I I really thank God for your life and also. Like I was saying, you are ready to go if it's about the gospel. You won't even ask how much you are going to, I mean, nothing like that. And I remember when you came, uh, you reconnected with me. You know, I was doing deliverance all over the place, and you came. You were reconnected, and you said, you're going back to Tamale. And I find it quite strange. Why Tamale? I remember asking. So, well, God said you should go there. And how can you leave the city and you go to Tamale? And uh, you said, yes, God wants you to go there so that uh, there are people there that need to be saved. Uh, the gospel, they must also. And, and you were saying it with all uh, seriousness. And the emphasis was about souls. The emphasis was about souls. It wasn't about maybe uh, you've gotten some gold there, some money or something. And I, I, it really touched my heart. And I, that is what actually uh, knitted my heart to you. Because if it's about souls, then I'm also for it. You know? And you were there, and things were not easy. I remember... Um, in those days, even to connect a call, it, it wasn't easy to get a call there, you know. No, no mobile phone. No there. mobile phone, mm -hmm. nothing else. But sometimes you come down and then uh, I, and that, well, uh, we also felt the little we can do to support you at the, up there, we can do it. But one amazing thing is that your focus on evangelism, your focus was about souls. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about reward. It wasn't about, and, and it's all about souls. And, and some of the things, I remember those days even when you come, 
and then maybe we'll give you something. It's not that you come and preach there, we'll give you something. So because I knew you have a family, you have a wife, you have children, the next thing, you're going for crusade. As soon as you get some little money, you're going for crusade at another place. Uh, so I have Lugu, I have crusade here, I have crusade there. And, and I remember one time, my wife and I was, ah, but Bishop has children. But every time you give him, if you don't give him money, he won't talk about crusades. So we decided, mm -hmm. we, we said, no, this time, whatever we want to give, we will share it into two. So this one for the children, and this one for crusade. And, but let me say that. Um, I'm not surprised of what God has done through you because your heart was first for God. And, and this is what is lacking in today's generation, um, especially the young ones. Their heart is for gold instead of God. for God, you know. And so, uh, and not only that, you genuinely love people. In those days, when you are coming, you come with a whole lot of other bunch of uh, young men, you know, <laughs> and, and they depend on you. You know, that was amazing. You see other guys, innocent, all these guys, they were, you come, and, and you are taking care of all those people. It also shows responsibility. You know, in ministry, if, if you are not responsible, and, uh, and, and the Bible says, uh, if you've not learned to take care of the, the, the few that have been given to you, how can you, take care of you, you know? So when I see what is committed to your care now, it's because you learn to do that. And apart from crusade also, you have an um, interest in people, developing them. You don't just leave them. And, and you are not going for, let me say, the educated. You are not also going for even the rich people. It was ordinary people who were nothing. And, and, and you, you so much have confidence in them. You train them and you, you build, them. build them up so that they will become what God. And I saw many of them that you brought up in ministry. You know, I saw many that you brought up in ministry. And that's one thing also I discovered about you is relationship. You believe in relationship. You know, no matter what, you believe in relationship. People break relationship anyhow, but for any reason, you would stay connected and uh, remain ever grateful for what the little contribution that people have done. I remember during the Congo War, I have come to North. When I came to North, we talked. I said, no, I think it's time for you to calm down. And you said, oh, you haven't heard from God. That is also something that I, I came to know that you, when God speaks, you move. You don't just move anyhow. I remember we were talking and your landlord uh, Bugri Nabu <laughs> came for the rent. <laughs> he came chasing you for the rent. Hey, pastor, my <laughs> rent. <laughs> you know, today, you, you said this thing, people don't even believe it. You know, and, and I was saying, no. I said, Charles, it's time for you to calm down. You said, no, God wants you to be. And the way the church is there, you were caring for them. I mean, to me, that was a very interesting. And it's something that is a subject that I personally learned from you. You know, you were not only, but you were so dedicated to those churches. You know, and, and though there was nothing coming from these churches, you know, I mean, we went to some of the places <laughs> had of opportunity. I, I remember. <laughs> We, we were driving in my <laughs> your, we were your driving new car. to Yape, <laughs> and then the police 
<laughs> I was I was behind the steering wheel, and I I was going 140, and the police had a gun, <laughs> and they are they, they arrested us, and then I said, oh, what? <laughs> and then you came out, and then it's oh, this is Bushaba, <laughs> oh oh Bushaba. <laughs> <laughs> that day I was going to be in trouble. <laughs> but thank God. <laughs> we thank God. We, we, we've had a close relationship. Yeah. Um, you know, when your son was born and God gave the word that yes. his hair should yeah. even be trimmed for, yes. for yes. a year, yeah. um, I was privileged to be the guy to yes. do that yes. for him yeah. after the one year. Yeah. Basically, um, it's, it's biblical. You look at the Nazarene. You know, they leave the um, yeah. the hair and after some time you know, and that's what Paul was doing Paul came to the temple and he, he was Shaved ambushed hair, yeah. to shave you know it has some biblical um, and it also means the boy is dedicated and I wanted um, a man of God anointed to do that you know and really really I mean uh, I can see the hand of God up, right. upon him yeah. I can see the power of God really on him. I can really uh, see the unction of God. Um, we, we, we've had a very good relationship. Yeah. Um, when we started church in Circle, yeah. um, our first Sunday, yeah. we were about 70 people, yes. and you were one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've brought and, even the ushers. And you, yes, and and you brought yeah. uh, you know, our first major meeting in yeah. Circle. Yeah. Uh, not only do you give us the speakers to yes, use, yeah. but after a while, you even bought us Yo, some I bought, I bought equipment. Oh, you know, okay. yes, yes, yes. You, uh, you've been, you've been there for us. No, no, um, <laughs> uh, uh, Bishop. You see, me, when somebody is doing something for God, no matter what, I want to really support. I saw what, be, like I'm saying, some of the things. Even for you to come down, it was a. Uh, Listen, during the Congo I, I, and I, you, I saw the pictures. One day I called you, and I called your wife. I remember. I said, Vivian, if he's not coming down, bring the children. Come down with the children and leave him there. Let him stay there. Whatever he want to do, you know. But honestly, it will take some few men of God, you know. And, and you had the heart of Paul. Paul will stay with its conviction and what God says. And I, in fact, in, even that time, he was still saying, no, God has not spoken. I said, you calm down. Calm down. To, and later on, when I heard that you, I was so glad. You know, I was so glad. And I remember I told I said, no, our cry is big. I mean, we all will find our space and we'll get a job done. And I, I, I believe so much in your ministry. And I, I still believe in your ministry. Because you make the difference. You make things. I've seen you um, uh, praying for the sick. You don't struggle. You don't struggle to do it. Pa, 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 pa. The ear is pop. Hey, ah, ah, the, ma, the, the dump is speaking. Hey, what, one, what can you see? You see, you don't struggle. And I, I keep on saying the power of God upon your life was so amazing. Well, I, I mean, some of people say I have raised nine people from the dead. Yes, but I, I also get intrigued when I see you ministering. And I personally came to my wife and I, we personally, it was something we said. I, you remember even during the war that this, and I, I told you something that I put your passes on our payroll. I think we did it once or twice. We we'll put them on our payroll just to sustain you, just to make sure because you are a good seed and we didn't want to see you uh, maybe die because of circumstance. And up to now, and that's, if something happens or hear something about you, I just reach you because it's like I, I know where God has brought you and uh, what the things you've been through uh, for you to get to this place. You're obedient to the faith. And I, I mean, I, I keep on saying that you teach the word, you heal, you minister. 
and uh, you, you don't you don't sell any blood of Jesus. You don't sell pink. Uh, you ah, <laughs> why are they going to get the blood of Jesus to sell? <laughs> <laughs> do people sell the blood of Jesus? Oh yeah. Where do they get it from? Uh, well, I don't know. I have to go and look for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Bible says Jesus is the uh, 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 altar okay, and the finisher of our faith. <laughs> it simply means we copy from what <laughs> Jesus <laughs> does. Mm -hmm. You know, and Jesus used the word to heal people. It, you know, not dwelling on some selling cocoa creams <laughs> and all these things. And, uh, you know, and, and, and the Bible says in Hebrew chapter 6, 12, he said we should imitate those who through faith. Yeah. You know, and, and I have seen you doing exactly that. You know, just what is scripture. And there's something that, you know, sometimes we meet privately, we talk. Anything that is not this, I, I, I'll say, no, Charles will not get involved with this. No, he, no, this one, no, this, I know. And uh, sometimes even I fight people by this. Sometimes I travel, people bring that I say, hey, no, don't go that way. I mean, knowing what God has really deposited in you. We need to do that. We need to recognize. May, and naturally, I have a, this thing that people that are doing things for God, you don't have to disturb them. You don't have to uh, do anything. And, and you have the same spirit. I remember when a guy <laughs> went <laughs> to a newspaper to accuse me. You were the first person who called me. You are the first, and anytime things happen, it's not about my mom or about somebody, you are the first to call. And that I've been concerning my children, marriage, you are also there. And just as I've been there for you. And so, uh, to me, it's a partnership. It's a partnership in ministry. And that's how I see it. And so, I, I, I always don't want to even say anything about, oh, you've done, I've done this. this. No, 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 no. No, those, those things, are, it's a partnership. We need to support one another. And that is what men, because everyone has a strength. Everyone has a strength. Uh, I always say that the gift, all the gift to one person. But we all have different levels of grace. One another. one another. But when we put it together, then we become strong. Complete. And I, I definitely, and I, I thank God that you have really, I know the things you fought. I know the things you've been through. I know hunger. You, people don't, today when you talk that, you've, you've gone through hunger, you've gone through this. That's one thing I didn't, uh, uh, I want to talk on. And that is the prayer um, walk. Amazing. Anytime you come to our place, you know, in the night, you walk, you are praying and walking. People don't, people think that, oh, maybe you just come and stand there and then uh, uh, miracles are happening. But they don't know how. I always say, I, look, Charles believes in prayer. And in the night, sometimes two hours, praying, praying, praying. Just like Jesus, who pray in the night, he comes the day, and then miracles are happening. And these are things that, to me, it should be taught. It should be taught. It's something that people should know. Your prayer schedule, it is something that needs to be taught. Uh, people should know how the prayer will, you walk around and you are praying. You walk around and you are praying throughout the night. It's so amazing. And it, it makes you stay fresh. And when you are ministering, you just stand there, you see um, God uh, glorifying himself with all kinds of miracles, signs, and wonders, you know. Amen. And I, I remember when you came to Orenigbe, I must, I must be honest with you, I adopted, I used to pray, I used to pray, but I adopted that prayer walk. I adopted it. And amazed. I remember one time in Orenigbe, I prayed throughout the night. I prayed and went to bed. Then it's like 
it was raining. I came out, it was raining, went back. The following day, there were a crowd of people in the house. What is going on? They said, why is it? It rained only in your house. And it rained only in, in our house. You know, so it, it's something that really, I, I hope, I mean, in some of your books, you put that thing there. You know, these days, many of our young ones in ministry just think, they, they want to experience the power of God. But, you know, they don't want to pay the price. They don't want to pay the price. They just want to stand there and things will start happening. It's not that. If you see a bishop standing in a crusade and things are, you don't know the amount of prayer. And I know. You know, because you stay with me several times. You come to my place and you are in praying. You are in praying for the, you, it, that means you, you got focus and uh, even the details, how you want things to be done. And I also, um, one thing I came to know that you love excellent things. <laughs> even, <laughs> I remember uh, sometimes me, pal, uh, Bulgaria, me, pal, okay. uh, <laughs> and other me, pals, you know. And it, it's when you love excellent things, it makes you to do things out of the ordinary. And, and I, I'm not surprised with what I'm seeing, with what you've done, the building, and all these things. I, I'm not surprised. Um, the only thing that I don't know whether that have changed is uh, eating from the angrum. <laughs> whether that, that, this is the angrum. Angrum is, you remember, sometimes watching. Oh, okay, the leaves. The leaves. the leaves. the leaves. Yes. <laughs> These days, we don't get the leaves to be able to eat the wache from it. But I used to love it. I used to love that a lot. And let me also say this. When I watch you over the years, you know, apart from maybe when you come, the money we give you, you make sure it go to crusade. Then they're saying everything. My wife said, ah, what is all this crusade, crusade thing? Eh? You know, and... One thing is that every money you raise from the ministry, you use it for that purpose. That integrity. You, you so much build integrity that if we are building a house, you raise the money, you will make sure that. And I, I personally also know, as, because sometimes when you travel, um, you, you preach in some of our churches in overseas. Whatever money that's given to you, either you are buying equipment that the church will need, or going into projects. It's not about yourself. You know, you were always taking care of the things of God. This is, this is something really, really, uh, it, it needs to be emphasized. If people don't know, that you were all the, the money, everything that came. You, you know, some people think that being a founder is just taking the church's money and chopping. <laughs> they don't know that being a founder, well, if, 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 if you are a genuine founder yeah. and you want to see things done, the church takes your money more. That is true. That <laughs> you, is true. You because, invest more. Because I can know. testify that. You sponsored the church. When I say you sponsored the church, you know, so many things from your own pocket. Because if you go and minister somewhere, the money is given to you, and, but you come back. And, and, and you, you know, I think we had a conversation I, several times. Oh, you have kids. You also have to, but you have a different perspective. Well, I said, well, that's how you want it. And maybe that's the way God also will give back to you. And I saw that in you, that every money, either you buy equipment. And you also have this thing, especially when you see something that will help your ministry. This thing, how much it is. And the next time you get money, you are going to buy it. Whether it's um, equipment for the ministry or something, something. else. You know, and that is why I said, your heart is really for God, not for gold. Your, and, I, and I also believe if your heart is for God, God will give you the gold. Mm. 
And so I'm not surprised. Mm. God will give you the go. Mm. Really, um, and your sense of ministry, and you brought something to Christianity in Ghana. And that's the miracle and science ministry. I know, yes, God uses me in those healing, that, um, raising the dead, yes, all this stuff. I, I've seen God doing amazing things. But we're talking also the healing ministry. You were forefront. You were the, one of the young ones who pioneered it before even others really came in. And I must give credit to you on that basis. You were the um, person who pioneered it all these years from the 80s to 90s. Even uh, from what I got to know, I mean, it, before even we met, you were going for crusade. Oh, yes. People I knew see. you at uh, uh, Samankese, Taqua, Taqua, Christia. Christia. Yeah. Um, Be before I came to Bible school, I had done all those places. Yes. Miracle Crusade. Yes, Miracle Crusade. Yeah. You made it popular, uh, something that young people, because before you came to the scene, all that we knew was maybe T.L. Osborne, uh, Bonky. Uh, the closest we saw was um, Brother D. Love, but he also, after some time, was out of I the I was not even privileged to be in his crusade, yes. so yeah. I only heard of it. Okay, you know. You know. So, but you came in, and, and I think that is something that needs to be sustained for the young one. Because uh, it looks like because of social media, this and that. No, we need it. We need it because we need the supernatural. Yes, the supernatural yeah. creates certain atmosphere, and in fact, crusades also, apart from winning souls, crusades stirs the city. Stirs the city. It reminds people that Jesus is still in his miracle business. That is it. You know, Bishop yeah. Adai Menza. Yeah, we've enjoyed you. Thank you for coming. You've reminded us of the basic things that we need to have ahead of us yeah. as believers and as ministers of the gospel. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you Amen. for having me. Amen. God bless Amen. you. Amen.